Gee. Pac-Man sure has changed over the years, hasn't he? Hi! <laughs> what was that? How did you- where did you just come from? From the door. It's open. Oh. Okay. But wait, why are you even here in the first place? I heard the magic words! What magic words? Pac-Man! Here comes the Pac-Man! Here comes the Pac-Man! Here comes the Pac-Man! Here, here he comes! Greetings to all packs, ghosts, and self-appointed mollusks. I am Lud Berserk. The very very guy. And I am Joshua, the ultimate unpredictable randomer. Right. Anyway, I So anyway. Here, Here comes, comes the Pac-Man! Seriously, who hasn't heard of this guy? Being one of the very first video game characters in history, it only stood to reason that he'd be joining in the same party as Frogger and Breakout, getting a game that breathed new life into a gameplay formula created nearly 20 years prior, and the group to bear such an honor to take on such an icon was a little developer by the name of Creative Asylum. Creative what? Creative Asylum. Sorry, that's kind of all I know, really. I don't know anything else they created. These guys are so obscure, they don't even have their own Wikipedia page. Not that this should be considered a detriment against them. I mean, this game came out in 2000. Look at it! LOOK AT IT! THIS CAME OUT IN 2000! 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 THIS IS BEAUTIFUL! Over the years, he would go on to star in his own platform games, get a couple of these cartoons, and has even landed himself a spot in Super Smash Bros. But this is where it all began for me. This is the game that introduced me to Pac-Man. But is time been kind to this game? Well, let's not waste any more time and find out. This is Pac-Man Adventures in Time. So we kick off our adventure with probably the most epic beginning I've ever seen to a game spawned from an arcade cabinet franchise. Hey look, it's a what? And no, I do not know how that planet got its shape or how it maintains stability. My best guess is that someone's been sculpting with the Eclipse Cannon again. But it's best not to question it. Hey look, we've got a couple of our good old classic ghosts here. I wonder what Inky and Clyde are up to. I mean, nothing says Pac-Man quite like giant empty landscapes at night. In space. <laughs> Since when can ghost bump it? Sweet mother of Miss Globular! Who is this guy? Well, that didn't take long. We're less than 30 seconds into the opening cutscene, and we're already introducing a darker, scarier, villainous character to the cast of the Pac-Man franchise. Oh, that's just creepy. Look, even the ghosts are scared of him! And I'll be seeing that thing in my nightmares. Wait. What's he saying? What's he saying? What's his motivation? Who is this guy, anyway? He is simply known as the Mollusk. This dark and mysterious creature seeks to eradicate all relics and traditions of the past, wiping out all that he deems as primitive and outdated, all to bring the world into a cold and soulless tomorrow where history is long forgotten. Wow. Really? No. I made all that up. Except for the part about him being called the Mollusk. That part's real. This is our evil bad guy for the day, and he needs to be defeated. And there is none other more qualified for the job than Pac-Man, right? Yeah, of course. It had to be him, of all people. However strange that is. Well, there was this one incarnation of Frogger who was locked in mortal combat with death itself and won, so this doesn't seem like much of a stretch. One gargle-meshed call through a TV that blocks out most watermarks later, our hero gears up for his odyssey. And thus concludes our setup. This is... The MacGuffin. A magical plot device that has somehow kept Pac-Man's entire global civilization protected from all kinds of vaguely defined evil for the past few centuries. Don't question it. Last night, or 
maybe it was 15 years ago, I have no idea, some sort of vault was broken into, and the MacGuffin was stolen! It was embezzled! It was pilfered! It was swindled, I tell you! I'm not sure. These historical records don't seem very accurate. I mean, I'm pretty sure there were only two of them. Look, it's even saying that the ghosts did all the work. Now that isn't right! Give the guy some credit! He is apparently the only evil bad guy on the entire planet who is strong enough to smash that tiny little ball. The other evil bad guys appear to be somewhat wimpy. They must be in the lackey class. And just what kind of reputation does this evil bad guy have? What set of special skills did the mollusk have to offer that no one else had? What exactly did he do to the MacGuffin? Well, he smashed it and scattered the shattered pieces into the past. How the heck did he manage that? All he used was his hand. His magical time-traveling hand. Now this is just getting out of hand. Ancient power of an artifact? This civilization's history? A break-in? The gift of time travel? The mollusk? This one game is adding so much to the virtually non-existent Pac-Man lore faster than I can keep up! Anyway, it's up to our unlikely hero to travel through the eras of the past to retrieve the missing MacGuffin shards, reassemble the dang thing, bring it back home, and prevent an opposing apocalypse of dystopian doom. Go, Pac-Man! Enter the magical fishing net! Your quest begins now! Wait, what? Pac-Man 2? He has instant access to the past as well? Just like that? Does everyone on this planet happen to just casually travel through time whenever they feel like it? So, look, Berserk, have you got your schedule for everything that you're going to do for the day? Why, yes I do. First, I gotta feed the cat. Then, I gotta get some milk. Then I'll be heading to work. Next, I gotta go back in time to have dinner with Benjamin Franklin. And then I'm gonna watch some anime. Wow! The perfect way to spend a completely normal, insignificant day! But it needs more steam trains. And thus, here is where the game begins. Jungle Japes! I should probably explain how a Pac-Man game works. Each level is something of a maze, and each maze is filled to the brim with pellets. And Pac-Man is set on eating them all, even though he doesn't know where they've been. Once all the pellets have been eaten, the level is complete. However, not without opposition, for there are four devious ghosts who stand in your way. Why is that? I haven't got the foggiest clue. They consist of the evil mastermind who pursues you in relentless chase, the magnet of ultimate chaos and disharmony, the master of camouflage through trickery, and girl. You know, that one obligatory one lone girl in the group who stands out like a sore pink thumb? If any one of these four ghosts cross your path, Pac-Man becomes one with the dead himself. Now, this has been a constant since the very first Pac-Man game, but this time they have arms! In fact, with the added detail and 3D graphics, we can see Pac-Man panicking whenever they get close. Oh sure, his expression looks pretty calm on the outside when this happens, but inside... You know, I don't remember him ever freaking out like this in any of the other games. Eh, I don't know. Maybe it's nothing. Oh no! It's coming this way! It's somebody's ghost! Help me! Help me! Huh? Somebody help! Hey! Why the squid are you running away? Fortunately, he has a defense mechanism at his disposal. He can just jump right over them. It makes things a whole lot easier. There! Now they can see me from a mollusk away! Wait... Wasn't that the same jumping mechanic add to that one Pac-Man game? It made it way too frustrating to even complete that game at all! Shh. We don't talk about that game. There is, however, a more interesting tactic you can use against the ghosts. For among the hundreds of small pellets, there are these much larger power pellets. Whenever Pac-Man eats one of these, the souls of the damned become slow and vulnerable, allowing Pac-Man to eat them. How does any of that work? Magic. Am I gonna have to tell you this every time? Anyway, during this window of opportunity, the vulnerability of the ghosts is conveyed by their literal blue shift. As long as they're in this state, Pac-Man can eat them. Consuming a single ghost grants 200 points, with each subsequent chomp adding double the points of the last one to your high score. Between pellets and ghosts, 
Pac-Man is staggeringly good at eating things. In fact, he's so good at it that he can even eat the ghosts with his own two feet! All he leaves behind is their eyes. You. During this point, the ghosts can't harm you, so they try to head into the one place in the maze that Pac-Man can't enter, dubbed the Regeneration Chamber. Once they get inside, they're able to respawn and it starts all over again. Of course, you shouldn't expect things to be too predictable, as there are still things even beyond ghosts that can kill you. Although, for all I know, it might not be a matter of can't enter as much as won't. Pac-Man does appear to have phasmophobia after all. Even when they're just eyes, they can still scare him, so maybe that's it. Then again, maybe he's just a gentleman who still has the courtesy to give his adversaries their own personal space as he simply rejects the idea of potentially walking in on them while they're getting dressed. I guess we'll never know. However, there is still one more thing Pac-Man can eat in this game, and that, my friend, is fruit. There's all kinds of different fruit Pac-Man can eat throughout the game to earn more points. What's more, the fruit changes up and increases in value with more points to give every couple of levels. You got cherries, strawberries, apples, lemons, bananas, watermelon, popsicles, uh, corn? Coffee? Soda? Ew! Rubber duckies? It's a squishy rubber ducky! When the universe burps, you instantly know that something delicious has formed spontaneously. You've got to wait for it to happen. A new fruit will appear eventually for you to pick up along your progression. Just be patient and take your time. Oh. That. I completely forgot about this. That can't be good. If you start taking too long to complete a level, then in due time, each of these ancient ghosts are replaced by their modern-day descendants, one by one, to wreak havoc on your progress. These ghosts are much faster and smarter, and it may be in your best interest to complete the stage before they show up. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Guide Pac-Man through each level as he runs non-stop, chowing down on everything in sight until the plate's clean. Don't get killed by the ghosts, and pick up some of those bonuses if you can. When there's just a handful of pellets left over, this handy little pellet radar appears on screen, treating any frustration one might have otherwise had searching for where that last dang pellet is hiding, pointing you in the exact right direction to finish the level, and you're good to go. And this is where things get interesting. Prehistoric Peril! Here we're introduced to slopes, so you can hike up to the top, and then show off how this is the only game I can think of that lets you surf the ground. Cannibal Village! For the cannibals apparently live inside a pot of boiling water. That's... Actually, that's disturbingly cool. Cutscene time! Time to see some further development on this enthralling story! Um, eh, not exactly. Hey, wait. Shouldn't Pac-Man have died when that ghost tapped him on the shoulder? Pac-Man has shoulders? Well, doesn't... Cannibal Dash? This doesn't look like level 4! What happened here? Ah, the bonus games! After every few levels, some kind of minigame comes up that breaks away from the traditional Pac-Man formula to do something completely different. Though, unlike Breakout, they're actually labeled separately from the normal levels, thus being organized more properly. And yes, several of them do involve Pac-Man running away from stuff. Usually ghosts. Wait, hold on. I thought you said they were cannibals. What do they want with Pac-Man? This doesn't make any sense to me at all. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Wait. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh no. Oh no! Why didn't I see this before? The pellets, the vulnerability, Pac-Man's design, the ghost vendetta against him, cannibalism? It all makes sense now! I've been so blind! Wait, what? I don't know what you mean. Well, we all know Pac-Man's just running around a maze eating pellets and a bunch of ghosts are just being jerks trying to axe him off for no conceivable reason, right? Well, yeah. Isn't that what Pac-Man is known for? But it just doesn't add up! It doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, think about it. These ghosts are cannibals! And they're going after Pac-Man! They were once the same race in life! And look at the pellets! D 
don't they look a lot like Pac-Man's body? They were lumps of flesh that once belonged to the ghosts and have now been mixed up and rolled in up together. That's why these larger pellets cause the ghosts to become vulnerable when eaten. <laughs> the power pellets, they possess that direct link with the ghosts themselves. Through their dismembered corpses, the packs were killed, their bodies torn, were torn apart, and Pac-Man's eating them! They're traveling throughout the ages, he's become this catalyst, causing generation after generation of generation after generation of anguish and suffering about his own people, dooming his own civilization and crumbling in his wake. He has brought this ghost, the ghost, the ghost, the ghost! He's brought the ghost to his own doorstep to capture the artifact in their seething vengeance, and is on his way to creating a bootstrap paradox. Any second now, he could end up devouring his own ancestors and causing a grandfather paradox. This is exactly the kind of madness that the Mollus can plan on breaking out of the universe to destroy all it all, all along, to destroy the very fabric of reality itself, to its existence itself, transforming Batman into a cruel, heartless monstrosity! Alligator River! Fairly self explanatory. There's a river, there's an alligator in it, and the Alligator River splits right down the stage, right down the middle. Apparently, these ghosts are so primitive that they can't even so much as touch the water. Boulder trouble! How the heck do these boulders keep rolling down the mini-mountain? Where do they come from? Whoa! Whoa! What's going on? The time machine is going crazy! It's dropping us right into... Camel Camp! Home of absolutely zero camels. Apparently we're in Egypt now. Happens all the time, doesn't it? Okay, can we get a snake charmer over here, please? Thank you. <gasps> Food! I haven't eaten in the last 20 seconds! I'm famished! Whoa! Ah! Snake charmers, help! So, you ready to accept the cobra challenge? It's like the ice bucket challenge, only has a lot more potential for imminent pain! I just wanted that giant cookie over there. My hunger surpasses my regard for my own safety! Jackal Canyon! The only level in the entire game without power pellets. Yet those ghosts still die constantly. The market. Well, that's helpfully vague. Look, even when he's perfectly safe on top of the regeneration... tent, he's still going nuts. Palace Courtyard. Quick! Everybody out! Somebody farted in the pool! Use the elevators! You can just stab him. You can just stab him! You can just sta- Oh, you've lost your chance! Now he's off to take the Pharaoh's challenge! They're still not gonna stab you, are they? Nope! Pharaoh's throne! I love how anyone who wants to see the Pharaoh has to walk out through a maze. You know what else I love? I love that you can do this! Boulder Trouble 2. The official sequel. Why is the tree made out of rubber? These guys probably haven't so much as even built a functioning wheel, and yet they've somehow created rubber? Oh, crud. I hate it when that happens. This bonus game is called Wine and Dinosaur. Um... Uh, am I missing something here? I'm not sure what the connection is. I just call it the hop hop ah. Obviously the best place to run after being chased by a giant mother dinosaur is directly in front of her babies so you can bop them on the head. Is this stuff really something I should be feeding to babies? The volcano! Okay, that is not a volcano! If anything, it looks more like a caldera that has lava in it shooting lava bombs out at you! I don't know man, it just looks like a big hole with lava in it to me. Okay, is it just me, or are those ghosts about to explode? The big tree. Seriously? That's what it's called? Could you get any more generic? Uh, the tree. Actually, this is the first of these weird gravity mazes. Gravity pulls you towards the vaguely roundish shaped maze, and you can still jump. However, you can't pan the camera out to see the whole thing. There aren't any teleporters either, and frankly, there's no pellet radar at the end of these stages. Oh, that's convenient! What are the odds? Log larks? Where are the larks? What are larks? Treetop trouble. It's here that you can launch ghosts into the air with these... Seesaws of... Yes!
something I can't do. Cannibal Temple. This isn't even a temple. It's a really big cube. How are you supposed to get in the cube anyway? Oh, hey! The first piece of the artifact is here. I'd snag it now, but I'm getting pretty hungry. The Hamlet. Pig! Ow! Oh, I get it. Ha ha ha. Hamlet. Hey, what are you... Quit doing that! Go away! Lots of Timmies died in this well. Thanks a lot, Hell Pig. Go quickly! Ride the pig! Going for a little hog dash! I've gotta ask, who's eating this stuff? It's gotta be the pig, right? But which one's the real pig? Forest River. Now, I know we've made some progress, because this level has better water. As a matter of fact, the ghosts can actually touch the water now. They're evolving! That's... useful. And here I thought Frogger had the strangest water currents I'd ever seen in my life. This river keeps priming and launching entire log torpedoes at everything. Makes eating these ghosts pretty difficult. Mushroom Madness! Sorry, Pac-Man. Your artifact piece is in another maze. Watch out for them clickers! <laughs> Jousting Tournament. Nobody showed up. No wonder. You guys are terrible at this. Hmm, I wonder what kinds of attractions they have in this place. Hey, look at this! Ghost Target! I didn't know they had a Six Flags here. How am I shooting these things anyway? Sorry guys, I think I kind of broke all these wooden targets and your anti-gravity watermelon with my gun. Is it shooting pellets? Fireball Frenzy! Wait, there's a dragon now? I thought this game was supposed to be historically accurate! Uh-oh. This level is timed. Gotta hurry, gotta hurry, gotta hurry, gotta hurry, gotta hurry! Almost there! Oh crud. Oh crud. Oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, oh crud! Uh, what did you just do? I really screwed up big time! Now watch this dragon burns Pac-Man to death. Now the ghosts each have their own individual changing rooms! The Temple! Well, that's enough of that. Actually, this does look a whole lot more like a temple than the last one we visited. Tomb Entrance! Where is this tomb, and how do I enter it? Inner Sanctum! Poisonous Snakes?! Man, that's a lot of nope! So, I touched the Pungi... Pungi... however it's pronounced, and who's playing it? Who's playing the thing to make the snake sleep? Is it an invisible ghost who has betrayed the others? Or did Pac-Man bribe him off screen? Hold a tick. I haven't seen these hieroglyphics appearing all over the walls for quite some time now, and I've gotta ask... Are there humans on this planet? I must find the humans! Heads up! Looks like you're about to get bowled over! Ah, no! I didn't even touch any golden idol! Pharaoh's tomb. This is a tomb? Looks pretty freaky. You know, I'm kind of perplexed about the severe lack of ancient Egyptian laser beams. I mean, we've had ancient Egyptian elevators, ancient Egyptian candy canes, ancient Egyptian gravity-shifting technology- OUCH! And ancient Egyptian spike traps! And all the ghosts can just walk right through them like they don't exist! They get to just casually ignore them. You ghosts have it so easy being dead! You can just walk right through spikes and stuff! You have no idea how hard it is to be alive! Oh, there's the tomb, I guess. And second piece of the artifact! Sweet! Bandit's hideout! What's this? These ghosts are packing revolvers! They're also packing some rather exquisite mustaches. 
Even Pinky has an exquisite mustache. And I dare say, their mustaches are so fancy that they even float amongst the windows to the soul that the layman call eyeballs when the ghosts have been eaten. Most exquisite. What the heck? These rattlesnakes all have a really bad case of synchronized narcolepsy. You know, it's official now. This game is a whole lot darker than I remember. If you think that's hardcore, you should see the ghostly adventures! Hmm, perhaps I should. Ah! Oh, I hate it when this happens! Oh, cool. More floaty stuff. Neat! Going for some barrel ballistics, are we? Looks to be that way. Hey, where does he even get those pellets that he throws? You don't want to know. Cactus Gulch. Wow, this classical west town has everything. Even an obligatory tumbleweed. This town ain't big enough for the two of us, partner. Bell's Saloon. <laughs> no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to fall down those holes. This level is deceptively easy. Platform Perils. <gasps> Steam Train! Yay! Oh my goodness, yay! We even have Steam Trains in this game! Oh my goodness, I love Steam Trains! Steam Trains! I love Steam Trains! Steam Trains saves me! Steam Trains for life! All hail Steam Trains! Wait, what? How do we... What just... You guys... <laughs> After that train, your steam train. All I have is this rail cart. Then I urge you to go on a rail cart rush. After it, hurry up on the double right away, quickly, PDQ, immediately, and without further delay, in the blink of an eye, in a second, instantly, pronto, this very minute, catch that traitor steam train, and be quicker than a muted potato frog on a leap day while you're at it, Mister. Can't. Too slow. <laughs> train trouble. Oh hey, look at this! You have to get all the pellets, avoid all the ghosts, and do it all in one try! It's genius! Yeah, this is the first chain maze of a few others to come. I just hope we don't run into any tunnels. Castle Ramp. <laughs> Let them eat cake! I do believe that's French, good buddy. Banquet Bash! Whoa! Check out this feast! I bet these guys are vegetarians. Well, looks like Pac-Man finally gets to eat off a table for once. No more floor scraps for him. Time to eat like a king. Hey! Keep your feet off the table! Also, Pinky here is suddenly a maid for some reason. She's replacing the pellets off the table as I eat them. She's trying to make me get fat and die! The waitress of sin is death! What's this over here? Ladies and gentlemen, the pig is dead! <laughs> treasure vaults. Where's all the treasure? All I can see are golden jewels. That's what I was looking for! Dark dungeons. Oh hey, it's another chain maze. There are portals in front of the doors. There is no escape! Wow, his jaw is so powerful, Pac-Man can eat through solid bone. This dungeon is a marathon! I better get a heart container after this. Actually, never mind. That's so much better. Ooh, what's up here? Better not be another dragon. Oh, it's just cannons. Yeah, let me strike a random match off my butt and see if these things still work. Ow! All set to go on some cannon capers, are you? I sure am! Look at these things go! They sure are fast! Hold on... 
cannons aren't supposed to work that way. You'd better not have just broken the universe. Aw, oh, come on. Why would... Uh... Help, I just broke the universe. Castle rooftops. The cannons have gone berserk! They want revenge! I'm not supposed to be here! This isn't my time! Oh, hey, check it out. Made evil soda. Mmm, delicious. Why is there no mutton? Check it out! It's the third piece of the artifact! I'm like... Three quarters of the way done with my breakfast. Totem pole. That looks nothing like a totem pole. Like, gasp! More ghosts! Time to make a run for it! Or rather, a canoe chase. Shoot him in the back. Shoot him in the back! Shoot him in the back! Or float across the water. It's faster, right? Yeah, I think these ghosts struggle with a concept known as logic. Or not. The Raft! A level with absolutely no gimmicks whatsoever! Well, I guess it does have one thing. Rubber Ducky Go- <laughs> The Riverbed! Where eating pellets gives you more air for some reason. So, let me get this straight. Pac-Man can jump while he's swimming underwater, but not in that kiddie pool back in the inner sanctum we visited earlier? Mine Camp Mayhem! Yes, you CAN jump in a minecart! There's more of this minecart madness?! It's a whole extra maze! This should be fun. I'm stuck! Somehow I did a good job. Gold mine! Minecarts are delicious! At long last! The fourth and final piece of the artifact is within my grasp! Now the time has finally come. I can finally go home, place the artifact back where it belongs, become hailed as a hero, and get some much needed lunch. Holy strange odor! Future City?! What in the... Uh, how the... This wasn't supposed to happen! Smoke is pouring out of the time machine? What did you do? So, is it good to know that the future is full of random elevators just casually lying everywhere? If you want to save your friends, solve my maze. Then there's no time to waste. Alright, let's... Whoa! I hope that's not why I see no one around this bustling city. Bridget shouldn't do that. Aw, oh, sweet! I can watch a dozen movies at once! In full screen. You looking to buy some memory screens? They're kinda useless unless you buy all of them at once. It's nice to know we still have to deal with rabbit ears static in the future. And those graphics, man! It's the future's newest indie game! Fruit Simulator! Research and destroy. So it seems I need a new energy source and able to repair the time stream or time machine or whatever it is I need to do to get me home. Otherwise I'll be stuck here. Forever. Yeah, no pressure or anything. Wow. This just might be the most unreasonably hazardous laboratory I've seen since Black Mesa. They've really upgraded from the narcoleptic rattlesnakes. But at least they do have seesaws to calm the nerves and the child of all of us. And you can play Pac-Man in Pac-Man? Whoa. Asteroid of Peril. Wow. In the future, our own asteroids are mechanical. That's... questionable. Go on. Eat the coffee, why don't you? Michael Bay's Asteroid of Peril, everyone. Oh. Looks like we've still got some work to do. These asteroids actually look natural. I think. Do asteroids come in purple and blue? I don't know. What with all the asteroid antics? I don't know. Something's always chasing me. Even if there aren't any ghosts around, there's always something trying to kill me. How am I breathing again? Rocket ride! Yeah, this is safe! I'm sure of it! Mm-hmm! Running around on the surface here. I mean, I've got exposed electrical lines of circuitry to keep me company. Oh hey! It's just like the treasure vaults from a while back. Clear one half of the pellets from the maze's main area, and a new section appears! 
mistake. <laughs> Well, I think I may have just screwed everything up horribly. Oh, hey, a hoverboard! Cool! I'll just use this thing to escape the spaceship I kind of hijacked. Now, I've got to be careful and stay away from any more large machine or... Ooh, what's in there? Going on space surf! On the floor. The future! I'm going to make this easy on you. I have a hoverboard, you don't. Laters! I'm picking up fast food. Reactor Core! The last level of the game. And it's a weird gravity stage, too. And it's got mini mazes. What a combo! Whew, I'm pooped. I got the energy I need. Now to fix time, return home, and kick that bad guy's butt! Oh, hey! We're back here again! Hey guys, I think your plan backfired. Ahem. I've always wondered if that means Pac-Man in his rather obscure language. And they're out of there! Bye-bye! And... VICTORY! Hey, that was pretty awesome, right? He just... He just killed the mollusk! I mean, wow. Jumping into the third dimension really beefs you up. These classic arcade game protagonists have gotten brutally hardcore! Looks like the hunters have become the hunted. But even after the campaign is complete, there's still more fun to be had. There's a bunch of extra content to unlock, comprised of some silly bonus cutscenes and additional mazes. Clearing through the game on higher difficulties will grant you access to these bigger, harder levels. And if you show true skill in the game, then you have this to experience! Isn't it great? Of course, if you want to share the greatness, the game's got itself some fairly decent multiplayer. There's Dot Mania, which is essentially a typical game of Pac-Man in competitive form, Time Bomb, which has players passing a high-powered explosive amongst one another that axes one of them off one by one until one is left standing, and Ghost Tag, which is also like competitive classic Pac-Man, but in which all but one of the players are ghosts, leaving the ghosted player to kill the one player who is IT. Whoever is IT is the only one who can eat pellets. Whoever consumes the most pellets wins! Now comes the part that isn't so fun. Do I have any problems with this game? Eh, a few. The game doesn't seem to have any major flaws, but there are a few small issues I'd like to point out. Now, in traditional Pac-Man fashion, Pac-Man runs constantly. He doesn't stop. The nitpick I have isn't that. It's that he continues his running animation even after hitting a wall. This also applies to the minecarts. Even eating isn't animated. With all the visual splendor in this game, it strikes me as odd that these things have no animations. Then there's the minigames. Most of them are pretty good, actually, though I would have liked to have seen a bit more mixing things up and making things harder when certain types of minigames are used again, such as the two matching games. While Memory Screens does give you 30 seconds to complete it, as opposed to the 40 in the Pharaoh's Challenge stage before it, I would have rather simply preferred a larger set of matches to make on the board. Just some more interesting ways to make these mechanics harder when they're used again. However, I am NOT a fan of the Canoe Chase minigame, and the method used to make it harder than Log Larks, as you have to continuously jam down on the jump button repeatedly while steering your canoe. It's quite awkward and uncomfortable to control, and it certainly doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Pac-Man to suddenly have to go to all this extra effort to control a canoe when he just had a much easier time doing it back in Log Larks, does it? 
There's also quite an abundance of these chase minigames, but some game types, like Ghost Target, are quite underused. Couldn't we have gotten at least one more of these? That's probably what Asteroid Antic should have been. I mean, it makes more sense than having two chase minigames in a row. Then there's the mazes. While Creative Asylum certainly did a fantastic job at constantly throwing new or combined mechanics into pretty much every level and adding to the old Pac-Man formula in very unique ways, it did trip up at least twice. Such as the level The Raft, which, as I mentioned earlier, has absolutely no gimmicks. There is NOTHING to make it stand out. It could have had breakable tiles, rattlesnakes, multiple ghost chambers, anything really, but it doesn't. It might as well be Jungle Japes. The other level is Inner Sanctum. If you find yourself in the poisonous snake area when said snakes wake up, you're stuck. Your only choice is that they either purposely lose a life or start the level all over again. Couldn't they put some sort of ramps in these areas to give you a kind of one-way exit in case of this scenario? Then there's the multiplayer maps. They're really dull and barren, and they're all pretty much the same. I think this is one case where recycling campaign levels for competitive multiplayer would have actually been an improvement. And finally, just another nitpick, but I can't help but feel that there was a missed opportunity with the extra secret levels you unlock outside of the campaign. They're all themed after the same five eras in the game's story. It would have been nice to see these ten new time-traveling levels take place in, say, the Ice Age, Feudal Japan, or Ancient Babylon. Then again, that would have probably most likely required new textures, and maybe even some more music. So, it's still understandable. But that's all I can think of, really. Tell me, you have anything to add, Joshua? Well... I'll say that this is very unique as far as Pac-Man games go. I mean, this kind of actually put in an actual plot, an actual storyline of sorts, and actually use unique elements to benefit it the way that the franchise... I don't even have my thoughts together. I don't even know what to say! I've still got plenty of positives for the game. The story's kinda silly, but eh, what are you gonna do? The constant shift in mechanics doesn't become overwhelming or confusing as Professor Pac-Man explains everything. And the shifts are pretty creative, such as no power pellets, the pinky made, additional enemies and hazards, and the weird gravity. New constants like jumping and the pellet radar also work wonderfully. The kinds of fruits available to eat, as well as the costumes that the ghosts wear, constantly change throughout the game, which make for some really nice extra details. There's also all your extra cutscenes in the secret levels, and the approaching descendant mechanic is really cool. The graphics also have a lot of polish to them, not just in fidelity, but in creativity, with little extras like butterflies fluttering around and even buildings out in the distance. They didn't have to put them there. They aren't in the playing field, but it's nice that they're there, as such attention to detail really makes these places feel alive despite only harboring ghosts. Hey, in the year 2000, it was kind of a big deal. I also like how the very first future level is so asymmetrical to really drive home that feeling of alienation and dread. Very clever! This is not only a great Pac-Man title, but a well-crafted video game in general. Great job, Creative Asylum! Whoever you are! Aw, oh, come on! There's gotta be at least one more thing that we can do to send this game off properly! Well, there is one more thing I can think of that we haven't talked about yet. What's that? This game has passwords. Really? So that means, let's screw around with everything! Yay! Well, that was fun, but I must be going now. It's almost Oxygen Day.
and the zombie piano sharks still need their daily Wednesday ping pong inspection so that they can go swimming in the neighbors. Bye bye! This has been Joshua the Ultimate Unpredictable Randomness. And until next time. Okay then. I'm Lug Berserk, the very, very guy. And as always, stay geeky, everyone, and uh, remember to lock your doors. Can you always sing that song? How to play? Say, play, 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 stability. My best guess is that someone should sculpt it with another trick tag again. Very stretch like the cracker thing. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my review of Pac-Man Adventures in Time, and spending over 45 minutes listening to me jabber about how a Pac-Man game works. Want to keep up to date on updates? Links are in the description. Got more time to burn on extensive reviews of really simple games? Have no fear! Breakout is here! Right here! And over here, you can see some earlier videos with the one and only Ultimate Unpredictable Randomness himself, as he has a tendency to randomly pop up on different channels. You can harness the unpredictability through either one of them, gameplay or review. It's your call. And if you're curious about the entire fake Pac-Man movie trailer I borrowed, well, you can give it a look right over here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see you in the future! Okay, I think that's enough arcade gameplay for now. Hmm. What should I play next? <laughs> what the heck was that?